Welcome to our study of Fundamentals of Operating Systems. This series of lectures is based on the book Operating System Concepts, 10th edition, by Silbershots, Galvin, and Gagne, and published by Wiley Publishing. In the last lesson, we were discussing the bounded buffer problem, one of the major synchronization problems in operating systems. In this lesson, we're going to move on to the another significant synchronization problem that is referred to as the reader's writer's problem. So let's get started. Suppose that a database is shared among several concurrent processes. Some of these processes may want to only read the database, whereas others may want to update, which involves reading and writing the database. The first are referred to as readers, and the latter as writers. Obviously, if two readers access the shared data simultaneously, no problem will arise as a result. However, if a writer or some other process, either a reader or a writer, access the database simultaneously, there may be a serious problem. To ensure that these problems do not occur, the writers must have exclusive access to the shared database while writing to the database. This synchronization problem is referred to as the reader's writer's problem. The reader's writer's problem has several variations, all involving priorities. The simplest one, referred to as the first reader's writer's problem, requires that no reader be kept waiting unless a writer has already obtained permission to use the shared object. So the only way a writer can lock down the object is if there are no readers in line for that object. Do you see starvation on the horizon there? Saying in line for that object is a little bit misleading, I think. To access a database object is just a matter of transferring the content of the object to the reader which takes little time. So really, a reader can only be blocked if a writer already has the object open for editing, at which point it's locked. Otherwise, readers have first access. The second reader's writer's problem requires that once a writer is ready, that writer perform its right as soon as possible. In other words, if a writer is waiting to access the object, no readers may start reading. A solution to either problem may result in starvation. In the first case, as I hinted, writers may starve. In the second case, readers may starve. For this reason, other variants of the problem have been proposed. In the solution to the first readers writers problem, the reader processes share the following data structures. The binary semaphores, mutex, and rw mutex are initialized to 1. Read count is a counting semaphore initialized to 0. The semaphore rw mutex is common to both the reader and writer processes. The mutex semaphore is used to ensure mutual exclusion when the variable read count is updated. The read count variable keeps track of how many processes are currently reading the object. The semaphore RW mutex functions as a mutual exclusion semaphore for writers. It's also used by the first or last reader that enters or exits the critical section. It is not used by readers that enter or exit while other readers are in their critical sections. The code for the writer process and the reader process is shown here. Note that if a writer is in the critical section and some number of readers, let's say n, are waiting, then one reader is queued on rw mutex and n minus 1 readers are queued on mutex. Also observe that when a writer executes signal rw mutex, we may resume the execution of either the waiting readers or a single waiting writer. The selection is made by the scheduler. You remember the scheduler, the process scheduler, or the job scheduler. 
I'm going to let you run through your own examples of these scripts at work the way I did the producer-consumer script, and let's see how you do. The reader's writer's problem and its solutions have been generalized to provide reader-writer locks on some systems. Acquiring the reader lock requires specifying the mode of the lock, either read or write access. When a process wishes to read shared data, it requests the reader writer lock in read mode. A process wishing to modify the shared data must request the lock in write mode. Multiple processes are permitted to concurrently acquire the reader writer lock in read mode, but only one process may acquire the lock for writing as exclusive access is required for writers. Reader-writer locks are most useful in the following situations. First, in applications where it's easy to identify which processes only read shared data and which processes only write shared data. It's also useful in applications where we have more readers than writers. This is because the reader-writer locks generally require more overhead to establish than semaphores or mutual exclusion. The increased concurrency of allowing multiple readers compensates for the overhead involved in setting up the reader-writer lock. In other words, the goal of efficiency and effectiveness with compromise is at work. Well, I think that concludes the reader's writer's problem. So let's take a break so that you can update your study guide, take care of any other business you may have, and when you're done, come on back and we're going to discuss an interesting problem called the dining philosopher's problem.